Good afternoon, folks, or good evening. Um, welcome to the Sports Report. I hope you've all recovered from the Patriots' yeah. uh, hot stopping victory last weekend and um, are calming down and getting ready for Super Bowl yeah. Sunday. Yeah, we're a week away as we tape this. Mm -hmm. And, Gary, it's up to you and I. To call the game right now. Is that right? It's uh, the Pats are five. Our five point favorite. Yeah. I hate that even thing. It opened a little higher than that. Yes, and it's it did. actually oh, peeled six back. And a, six and a half. Six and a half. And it's peeled back to five. And that, folks, is supposedly at um, the, the reason for that is one person has put a multi million dollar bet on the Eagles. Wow. Now, we don't know whether it's the spread or the over-under. That? That he put the money on? Yeah. Yeah. But it's on the Eagles. Well, that, so, that might be enough to move the line right there. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when news of it gets out, and then you get some more healthy bets that follow after that. Yeah. Um, but at five, um... I'm on the Patriots. Yeah, I'm on the Patriots, too. Even though five for the Patriots is a lot in the Super Bowl. They always play close Super Bowls. Yeah. They win them, by and large, but they're always close. We'll so see. I could see them winning this game by a field goal. Absolutely. And in yeah. which case, they wouldn't cover. Yeah. And but That would be embarrassing. Yeah, that would be. Well, you know, that's. but look at their history, yeah. right? Hey, listen. Even the last time they played Philly, I think... Uh, la this is very similar, I think, to the spread the last time they played Philly in the Super Bowl. I believe the Patriots might have been favored by four in that one. They didn't cover because they won by a field goal. Mm. Now Could happen again. Well, look at last week. Yeah. I mean, exactly. the Patriots won, but they didn't, didn't cover. Didn't cover. No. Yeah. So we both lost. Right. Yeah. But, you know, it's impossible to bet up against the Patriots. Right. So It is, especially for me and you Super both. Super Bowl, what are you, kidding? Yeah, you kidding yeah. me? Yeah. <laughs> i got to be rooting for them. And you know what? And there's been a couple of times this year when I said, this doesn't make good sense. Yeah. I think the Patriots can win, but I don't see them covering the spread. And even then, I wouldn't bet against yeah. them because I don't want to root against them. Yeah. Uh, but last week... Uh, I felt confident they would beat the spread, and they didn't. Right. So. I did, too. Yeah. But. And, I, you know, they could very easily cover this spread. It's, yeah. I mean, it's less than, less than a touchdown, right? I so. think I wouldn't be surprised at all, as we said before the show started. I can see the Pats winning this by two touchdowns, 17 points, something like that. Possible. But the Eagles, they don't have. So you want to pick a, a score? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just want the Patriots to win. I'm going to say they win it 31-17. All right, Gary, 31-17. I'm going to say 27-10. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Okay, you go 14, I get 17. All right. Yeah. yeah I like that 27-10. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, folks, we're going to do a little special show tonight. We're going to talk about all the four home teams uh, here in Boston, the professional teams, and talk about who our favorite players are right. or were when we were kids. Okay. Or who we thought are the best players we've seen. Right. And that could be two different things, That's right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And... Um, also, any interesting stories we might have? I got a couple of pips. I'll bet you do. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to tell you one right away. <laughs> okay. Do you remember John Wyatt? Oh, sure. John was a relief pitcher. He could throw the ball high. Yes, he could. Um, Big guy. <laughs> the guy who first base broke for second. Wyatt standing on the mound. Throws the ball to Pudge Fisk, Fudge fires it directly to second, and hits Wyatt right in the head. <laughs> I remember that. I do. Wyatt I just walked that. over and picked the Think ball up. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> no, yeah. like nothing happened. Yeah, he didn't get out of the way or anything. <laughs> just 
Yeah. And I used to collect autographs. I do and, recall that. Yeah. And there was a, a guy wrote a little story about going to John Wyatt's house house in <laughs> Kansas City. Uh-huh. Well, he lived in the ghetto. So he's, kids banging on the door, banging on. Finally, Wyatt comes to the door and says, Mr. Wyatt, will you sign these two pictures? He looks and he says, you got to be one crazy mm, 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 <laughs> to come into this neighborhood. Do you know how quick you can get dead in this neighborhood? Give me these pictures. And he signs them all. He says, get the hell out of here while you're still alive. <laughs> Uh, I can see him doing John that. John White, I do call him. Yep. He's a big guy. Oh, yeah, big yeah, guy. And big he guy. could throw the ball. He could. Yeah. And that kind of side, almost sidearm slingshot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he could bring it. And he could bring it. Um, so the Red Sox. The Red Sox, yes. Yeah, I accidentally, screwing around, mm-hmm. got the 49 Red Sox. What a team this was. Okay. Ted Williams. Yeah. 343, 43 home runs and 159 RBIs. Wow. that's a big year. But, do you know, uh, one of my favorite players when I was a kid was Junior Stevens. Junior Stevens. The Surratt Stop. He hit 290, 39 home runs, and 159 RBIs. He wow. tied Ted. He tied Ted at yeah. 159? Yeah. And well, you know what happened? <laughs> the next year yeah. was Walter Dropo's rookie year. 322 he hit, 34 home runs, and 144 RBIs. As a rookie. Junior Stevens hit 295, 30 home runs, and 144 RBIs. Wow. He tied both of them. In subsequent years, one after the other. Isn't that something? Yeah, and I can remember him. He used to step into the bucket. Talk about a wide open stance. I mean, there was no mystery what he was trying to do. Yeah. Right off that left field wall or over. Or over. And you know, he wasn't a bad fielder either. Huh. He, had a, he had a fielding long career. Um, and... Uh, but he uh, split it with a couple of other teams, too. But he had a couple of really good years yeah. for the Red Sox. Those are big numbers. That 1949 year also had Bobby Doerr hitting 309, 18 home runs, 109 RBIs. Johnny Pesky hit 306. Dom DiMaggio hit 307 with wow. eight home runs and 60 RBIs. Mel Parnell went 25 and 7, left hander in Fenway Park. I remember Mel. And Ellis Kinder went 23 and 6. 23 and 6. I mean, that was. Now, that was back in the uh, four man rotation days. It was. So they got 40 starts back in the day. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And um, I think uh, the fourth pitcher in that rotation, if I'm not mistaken, was Joe Dobson. Joe I Dobson. Think. Don't yeah. recall Joe Dobson. Joe Dobson uh, goes back to 1940 or so, and he was out of baseball around 52 or 3. Um, so but we had him towards the end. Actually, we had him most of the time. Oh, okay. Yeah. He started with the Cleveland Indians for a couple of years, but we got the good years out of him uh, 137 and 103. Okay. Uh, pitched for the Indians for two years, Boston for eight, and Chicago uh, for a couple. Oh, okay. But he was the serviceable. Fourth, the fourth yeah. pitch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, third or fourth guy, probably. One wow. of the things that amazes me is that Johnny Pesky never made the Hall of Fame. Mm. He was a good player. He was a good player, is right. And on the 1950 team, uh, well, Dropo, Junior Stevens, John DiMaggio, his, his highest batting average, 328. 328. Yeah. They had a stacked team, and they had a utility ball player by the name of Billy Goodman. Yeah, I know the name. He could hit. He got 344 at bats, and he played about five different positions. Yeah. But he couldn't crack the regular lineup. Yeah. 
344 at bats, he hit 354, and he couldn't get in the lineup. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I think he had one home run. That's, yeah. But... Can you imagine having, he's just having a team now that had two players on it that had 159 yeah, RBIs? Yeah, two. unbelievable. 159 RBIs. Unbelievable. Um, so now I look at the catches. And they didn't win. I know it. I know it. They lost. But in the end, they lost the one playoff game, didn't they? Yeah. I think to the Yankees? I'll have to look that up. But they didn't win the pennant. Right. No. Um, so I started fooling around with the catches. Now, I didn't go back into the dark ages. Okay, good. Uh, That's good to hear. So, uh, Jason Veritek, Carlton Fisk, and Sammy White. Sammy White, yeah. Now, Sammy White was not a great hitter, but he's good defensively. And he was around for about 11 years. Uh, Jason Veritek... And Carlton Fisk. Yeah. My personal favorite, Carlton Fisk. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, he could do it all. Plus, yeah. he could run. Yeah. And he had a flair for the dramatic. He was a New England kid, right? Yep. From New Hampshire. Yep. Yep. His workout was chopping wood, remember? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, in, but I'll tell you, God, I love Jason Veritek. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, come on over here. Come on over yeah. here and stuff that glove right in. Uh, he was, you know, as he got into his 30s, he was a great captain yeah. on that team. I saw him in a game, uh, and he had the ball at home plate long before the runner came in the run was one of these big guys. And you could see the collision coming. And, fifth, uh, and Veritek went down. And took him at the knees and flipped him. Uh, and the guy never stopped running. Uh, I'm trying to think of his, his father was a pitching coach in the majors. Mm. Uh, and he got up in the majors and he was uh, a, a fringe player. But he was big. What a collision that was. But guess who held the ball? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So Veritek, of course, came in one of the great trades, right? He did. Veritek and Derek Lowe oh, right, from Seattle. What a robbery. For, was it a relief pitcher? <sighs> yeah, it was. It, it was. was a closer. No, it was a closer. Uh, Is it Tom Gordon? No. Um, oh, boy. He began with H. Not who, Hector, but. Uh, who did nothing out there. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing at yeah, all. Yeah, did absolutely nothing. And we uh, got Veritek. And. Uh, Derek Lowe. And her Derek Lowe. And yeah. I, let me tell you something, they were both that not only serviceable, but they were good pickups. So do you recall who that general manager was? I'm not sure. No, I no, don't. No, I'm trying to... Was it, could it have been Dan Duquette? I think... It was. I think... I think that's a reasonable guess. Yeah. I think it's, it's Duquette or the guy before Duquette. Now, before very frankly, I don't, Duquette, remember, who I don't remember who that was before Duquette. Yeah. We had Haywood Sullivan, and then we had. Haywood uh, didn't have a lot of yeah. imagination, yeah. Yeah. but it didn't uh, work out Yaki, too well. Yaki liked him. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Mrs. And, Yaki. And, uh, he was like a son to her. Haywood, uh, he liked something else. Yeah. The bottle. Yeah. But, hey, listen, we all have our little weaknesses. Right, and of course, he's ultimately famous for Fisk walking away because he didn't file the paperwork on time. I wonder and, if that was an accident and, or whether they said good riddance. Yeah, they wanted an excuse to get rid of Fisk. Yeah. Because I think Fisk had been vocal. And also knocking the on the office. door or wanting too much money, too. Right. Right. You wonder a little bit about that. Yeah. Let's move to first base. Okay. I came up with, well, a story, a character, and a damn good ball player. Okay. Uh, Nick Kosaski had one year and the beginning of another for us. Yes. And <laughs> he, was good. he had a hell of a season. He just sure did. Uh, and then came down with vertigo, mm -hmm. which 
I tell you folks, I've had a couple little battles with vertigo. In the ear stuff, aggravated by the sinuses, and I gotta tell you, you get dizzy yeah, with that. Bad news, bad news. Bad news. Yeah. Uh, I had to miss a re retirement party of a dear friend of mine because I didn't dare drive to Rhode Island. Yeah, it's probably the right decision. Mm. And there was a whole bunch of people came from around the country to see him and all that stuff, and I had to punch out. Couldn't yeah, go. That's too bad. Yeah. Uh, but Sasky was a good ball player. He was. Yeah, and that was, was the too, end of his career. It was, and it was too bad. Yeah. He was a good guy, too. How about uh, Dr. Strange Glove? Yeah, Dick, Dick Stewart. Stewart. He had 42 home runs for us one yeah. year. He hit 33 Got another year and 28 another year. When I was young, he was one of my favorite players. Yeah. He, he could hit them long. He could hit some shots. He could also he, strike out. He had that. I still remember cutting the thing out of the paper about his overlapping grip. Yeah. He had that yeah. overlapping yeah. grip where his fingers, two fingers were under the yeah. nub of the bat. Yeah. And yeah. I was always taught as a kid to lock the little fingers. Yeah. Well, that was about as comfortable as a do-it-yourself. Uh, 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 but yeah, he had. He was. Uh, I was a fan of his. We yeah. Got him from the Pirates, right? Yeah. Back in the day. Wait a minute now. Did we get him from the Pirates, or was he over in the? I think we got him from the Pirates. I think so too. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's who we came up with. Yeah. And I then, remember the ball in the dirt when he scooped it, and it landed in the stands. <laughs> scooped happened. it like he came up, like he thought he had it. Open the glove, it's not there. It's Meanwhile, it's flying through the air, it literally into the stands. <laughs> more than once. Yeah, he did it a few times. Uh, and the first baseman that was the weapon, Movon. Movon, yeah. The hit dog. The hit dog, Movon. Do you know, with... I don't know about we, uh, me, but he's been kind of forgotten. Yeah, he faded quickly. But boy, I'll tell you something. He had three or four seasons for us. Boy, that they were was big, big. something. Yeah, he put some numbers up. I get 44 home runs. Well, then he yeah. went to Anaheim and got hurt the first year, fell down the dugout steps. <laughs> and then he just... Kind of faded away. He got, faded. He came well, back, he, the, had other injuries. And then, of course, the lure of uh, the adventures off the field yeah. kind of messed things up. And he rolled a couple of pickup trucks. Yeah. And before you know it, he was out of baseball. Do you think he was a steroid guy? He was an alcohol guy. He was an alcohol guy, yeah. And he loved the strip joints down in Rhode Island. In Rhode Island, yeah. yeah. He used to get in trouble down Foxy there. Lady. Foxy Lady. <laughs> Yeah, he gave the boxy lady so much free advertising. Boy, he, he was well known down yeah. there. Yeah. Um, so we move off to second base. But you know, I, I'll think about Mo Vaughn. I often think if he had stayed with the Red Sox, mm. and you know, the foxy lady probably still would have happened, but maybe it wouldn't have. Maybe somebody would have said, you know, you shouldn't be doing this, Mo. And mm, if he had stayed maybe. with the Sox, you know, he could. Be, have had a heck of a career. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying Hall of Fame, but not far. Right. He could swing the bat. No, he had about Oof. that f maybe five years spread there where mm -hmm. when he first came up to when he left. Yeah, you couldn't get him out. Yeah. Second base. And he, and he brought an attitude. Yes, he did. A competitive attitude. Yeah. Yeah. Um, second base. Second base. <laughs> By the way, he's doing well. From what I understand, he's building Homes for... Um, Are we talking Mo? Still? Mo, yeah. yeah. Homes for the elderly and for um, the homeless. Oh, good for him. Yeah. Is he still in this area? No, New Jersey, yeah. I think. New Jersey. Yeah. Um, well, we got Pedroia, don't we? And we, we do. have And we have Bobby Doerr. Yes. And then we have... Um, Felix Mantia. Oh, I love Felix. Remember him? Number 12. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was... Uh, he hit 30 home runs once, didn't he? He did. Yeah. And he batted 289. Yeah. Yeah. I remember Felix Mantia. And then the next year, he had 18 home runs. He batted 275, and then he disappeared. Yeah. Right off the radar screen. 
Yeah. He had a portion of a year after that, and he was gone. Like yeah. he was 31 years old or something. But he had the Fenway swing. He did. I remember Felix Banty. And he was a banjo hitter until he got here. And somehow or other, him and Rico both came up with the uh, left field swing, and holy cow. Yeah. Uh, Bobby Doe was a great ball player. Yes, he was. Great ball player. Just passed away at the age of 99. Right. As the oldest living ex-major leaguer and the last member of the 46 pennant winning Red Sox. Yeah. And Ted Williams loved him. That's what I understand. Yeah. I don't recall ever seeing him play, but yeah. I just Well, I saw him at the end of his career. Yeah. But Ted Williams talked about him at great length and got him in the Hall of Fame. Ted was on the Veterans Committee, and he fought for Bobby Doerr. He, he really and truly went to bat for him. Uh, as he said, he said, not only was he a great player, but he was a great human being. That's he said, heard. and he never spoke above a conventional tone. And he said, he saved me more heartache by saying, Ted, you shouldn't be doing this. Uh, Ted, back off. And uh, he loved her. And Pedroia, looking at his fielding statistics especially, yeah. he is a special <coughs> player. He's very good. Yeah. Special, special kind of guy. If he can stay on the field. He's at the point. He's at that now point. Where, He's at that point. Boy, oh boy, this, you yeah. know, it's the perils of Pauline watching him play now. Shot stop. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, I got four of them, yeah. and I wouldn't be ashamed of putting any of them out there. Okay. Junior Stevens. Junior Stevens, yeah, we talked about him. He, yeah. he could hit the ball. No question. Noma Garcia Para. Yeah. He was, I, I made a note one time about him. We caught lightning in a bottle with him. Mm hmm And if it weren't for the steroids. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Sports Illustrated cover. Uh, yep, with muscles on top of muscles. Right. And then it was all over. Yeah. Yeah, what a bummer. I, I would have loved to watch him for 15 years. Yeah. It, career ended way too soon. That's a, that was one of the players they, they got rid of at the right time. Yeah, that doesn't always happen, you know. Yeah, they <laughs> traded him. Yeah. And it was very controversial at the time. They won but the they made the right move and they won the pennant. Yeah. yeah. Rick Burleson. Mm hmm. Uh, good player. A good player. Yeah. Chippy. Good, chippy. Has a good arm. Yeah. Uh, stuck a few hits in from time to time. But um, he was. Um, played with an attitude. He played with an attitude, right. Yeah. And he was a team leader. Yeah. And Gonzo. Uh, Alex Gonzalez yeah. was the best fielding shortstop I have ever seen in yeah. my life. Yeah, we didn't see him for long enough. No, we didn't. And then we got him back a second time for, yeah. for a short time. Right. But that one year, he was our shortstop. Yeah, he was a wizard. Oh, he did stuff out there the shortstop shouldn't be able to do. Yeah, that only Ozzie Smith did yeah. at the time. Yeah, yeah. Boy, oh boy. Uh, yeah, Junior Stevens had a lifetime 274 average over hmm. 12 years. It's a power. Now, third base. Yeah. Well, third base is kind of crowded. Frank Malzone. Yeah. He was my boy, was and he my was your favorite, boy. Yep. Favorite when I was a kid, absolutely. Yep. He had um, he had a good career, excellent gold glover. Yeah. I, what, four gold gloves, I think. Then we had Wade Boggs. Hmm. He led the Red Sox in batting nine straight years. Four years over 360. Yeah, he could hit. The thing I always remember about Boggs is that I've never seen anybody who could, to his level, intentionally just fall off balls until he saw when he could drive. He would just fall them off, fall them off, fall them off. And he was doing it intentionally. He would just, bat control, he'd just fall them off, fall them off. Then they'd get one in there and he'd just turn on it. Crack on it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I then, always wish he hit for a little more power. He, and he did one here. He, he did 26 one here. home runs yeah. and said, there, see, I can do it. Right. 
but his batting average dropped off. Yeah. And, um, if, and if he had run, been able to run the bases better, because he was better. constantly yeah. on base. Yeah. He was constantly Const on base. Absolutely. He walked. And, and you know, he came up to the Red Sox from Pawtucket. Had a hard time getting here. As a first baseman. Yeah. He, that was his, he played the entire year down in Pawtucket at first base. Yeah. Came up to the Red Sox and they said, over there, kid. They and he hit the, spent the year down there hitting like 360 yeah. or something, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. I mean, he was unbelievable. He was a great guy. Yeah. Oh, nicest guy in the world you ever want to talk to. Yeah. Yeah. Like no, to party. No pretension. <laughs> <laughs> like to drink beer and party. Yeah. yeah. Like women. <laughs> you know, uh, and then, then we have Rico Petrosali. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I, I forgot Ned Martin. Boggs was he would always take two strikes. Yeah. And Ned Martin would always say, "Okay, now Boggs has got him right where he wants him now." <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, Rico Petrosali. Perfect Fenway swing. 210 home runs. Yeah. In uh, 13 years. Only batted 251. Yeah. But he was a damn good fielder. Very steady. Shot stop in third base. Yeah. 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 But he uh, had one year, I think he had 40 home runs. Yes, he in did. In Fenway Park. He yeah. Did. He had a real Fenway swing. Yeah. Oh, did he ever. Oh, just popped up in the air. And... Now, how about this for an outfield? Teddy Ball game. Yeah. Ted Williams. Can't argue with that one. Freddie Lynn. I'm with you, center field. Yep. Jim Rice. Uh, Hawk Harrelson. Yeah, I love the Hawk. Dwight Evans. Kyle Yastrzemski. Don DiMaggio. Jackie Jensen. Tony Canigliaro. Tony C. Yeah. You know, and Reggie Smith. And you Reggie, know, yeah. You take them all. Fred Lynn was the most graceful center fielder I think I've ever seen. Yep. He looked like he was gliding out. And such yeah. a beautiful swing. He, uh, by the way, he has said numerous times the biggest mistake he ever made in his life was leaving the yeah. Red Sox. And he's right. Mm hmm. Yeah. He had made here. Yep. And he had a beautiful center field to play in. Plenty of room. Yeah, you could say the same thing as Freddie Lynn and Mo Vaughn. Yep. And Jim Rice was smart. He stayed here. He stayed. Yeah. And towards the end of his career, I think he had problems here. I don't think he wanted to wear glasses. Mm. But I don't think he was seeing the ball as well as he no. should have been. But boy, I'll tell you, uh, during the heart of his career, he hurt an awful well, lot of baseballs. Jim Rice in 1978 has stats that are just, you know, video game stats. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I believe he hit like 340 or something. He oh. had 47 homers, yep. if I recall. And a million RBIs. Like 40 something doubles. And what, the one I remember, he had 15 triples yeah. that year. Do you know he could. And he had 417 total bases. He I could remember really that run. number. I believe it is the Red Sox record. Could well be. Could well 417 be. 417 bases <laughs> in a year. Yep. Uh, Dwight Evans. Yeah. Good fielder, great fielder. Good fielder, fielder. Uh, great fielder, great fielder, yeah. Uh, I would, and you know what, I would say, actually, good fielder, great arm. Great arm, good. I mean, he, well, had, well a, said. he had a terrific. And he also, in the so, second half of his career, finally got his stance. Remember he yeah, was going through yeah, that stuff just, about uh, the bat flat behind him? And I, I think very fondly of him, but I also remember that during his career, there was some frustration with him, you know, because you looked at the tools and it was like, okay, when How, do you when well, do you really you put it all this? together? Yeah. And he was he was he was a very sound defender. He was, but he had a throwing arm. He had an absolute <sighs> cannon for a throwing arm. He sure did. Yeah, and yeah, he, and, and fairly you know, accurate too. He 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 really was a better player in the second half of his career than he was the first half of his career. And that's kind of yeah, backwards. He was, but. Then we have Yaz. Yeah. Uh, it's longevity, I think, is probably what we'll most remember him by. And, and 67. the one year. 67. 67. Yeah. Best year I've ever seen anybody have because you, and I was 12 years old watching it, so I was a kid. But he was amazing. Talk he, about a clutch player. He was unconscious. He would just win game after <gasps> game after game for you. 
in the late innings. It was just unbelievable. Then you take that to one side and look at the rest of the body of work. He was above average ball player. Oh, absolutely. He had but some not, good years. But not much not beyond great. that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he he played a long time. He so he had a long, long time. He piled he up numbers. Healthy. Piled up numbers on longevity, yeah. right? And he was uh, above average in left field. Yeah. Not brilliant, but above average. Yeah. He played the wall well and had a decent throw on. Yep. Yeah. And then he made the conversion in the first base. That's right. And he yeah. was pretty good. And he was all right over yeah. there. Yeah. He was solid. Because he had been a shortstop early in this. Yeah. Uh, ba back in the minor leagues or yeah. in college, yeah. We get Dominic DiMaggio, mm. uh, an underrated ball player. Uh, Batted 298 lifetime, 11 years, and there was no better defensive center fielder in baseball when he was out there. Overshadowed by his brother and Ted Williams. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah now, no question. Uh, and also, you know, there's a third brother there in the mix, Vince. Yeah, I recall and, that. Yeah, and Vince could hit home runs. He also used to lead the league in strikeouts. But... Uh, Dom was a hell of a player, yep. and he was a hothead. Oh, was he, he yeah. a hothead? Red Sox brought up Tommy Umflett, uh, and they said, they were playing him in spring training games, and they said, you know, Dom, you're getting along in years. You know, we, we're going to take a look at Umflett. Yeah. And he said, well, I'll tell you, I'll make it easy for you. I'm going home. You can look at him all <laughs> you want. And he retired at 31. 31? 31. Wow. Or 32, yeah. Wonder if and Umflet, Umflet, very little was heard from him after yeah. that. I wonder if he regretted that. You know what? He went to business and he was very successful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, I don't think he regretted it. He went down the Cape. and uh, But, boy, I'll tell you, he was a stubborn, stubborn guy. Yeah. Um, then we get Jackie Jensen, who's a guy I think we overlook. Yeah. 11 years in the bigs, 199 home runs. Um, five times he had over 100 RBIs in a season. And he was probably the best base runner on the Red Sox. Right. Not a speed demon, but he was a small ball player. Um, Tony Amos. I love Tony Amos. <laughs> He didn't get cheated when you were no. at the bat. <laughs> he had 43 home runs for us That's one right. year. That's yeah. right. Man, he took his hacks. Yeah, he didn't get cheated. Yeah. And after the game, he's the nicest guy you ever want to talk to. Yeah. Yeah. Nice guy. And he was another one. He was a pretty good center fielder, but he, he also had a great arm. He did. Yeah. He did. He had a very he powerful He positioned throwing himself arm. very yeah. well out there, too. Yeah. He was a smart ball player. Hawk Harrelson. Yeah. There's a lot, and Hawk. Love the Hawk. Yeah. His persona was much better yes. than his ability. That's right. <laughs> yeah. But he did give he th 30 home 60, runs yeah. one year and 35 another. 35, for the Red Sox. Yeah. yeah. But he was a character. He certainly was with his Nehru jackets. Yeah. yeah. Tony Canigliaro. You know, we never stop and think about how good he was. Mm. He got hit in the eye and he still played with one eye. Right. He ended up with 166 home runs in eight years, and he had 32 home runs, 36 home runs, and then 28 home runs, and then the lights went out for the Sox. Yeah. Well, you say to yourself, if he had stayed in one piece, what uh, a ball player he was. What would a ball have player. He was another perfect Fenway swing, lo oh, local yeah. boy, teen idol. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, the kid had it all. Yep. Until Jack Hamilton hit him. That's right. The yeah. White Rat, yeah, Jack, Jack Hamilton. Hamilton. And then we got Reggie Smith. Yeah, I liked Reggie. I did saw too. Him, saw him this, did you see him this summer when they had him on? I did? Yeah. Yes. I also met him down in Pawtucket. Um, he was down there for something. Uh, and you know, for a guy that had this reputation of being intense and yeah. uh, not, surly, not, not but... fan friendly. Yeah. Maybe even he surly. couldn't have been nicer. Hmm. Couldn't have been nicer. And I had six pictures of him. And he went through and signed each one. Now, where did you get this? Yeah. I've never seen this before. Yeah. He was but a good player. He was. He had a great arm, but he was wild with it. He, 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 could, he had a strong arm. Mm -hmm. But, but the he, accuracy, yeah. 
He was angry. And yeah. you know what? Growing up black um, and being made to sit in the back of the bus. And, yeah. Oh, you can't eat at this lunch counter. Very intelligent guy. And I, I wouldn't be able to understand it if he wasn't angry right. about it. You there know? is some resentment towards it. So yeah. yeah. Uh, do you know the Red Sox were, they, were, they, were Red, they weren't the Red Sox till 1907? In 1901 to 1904, they were the Boston Somersets. The Somersets. And from 05 to 06, they were the Boston Puritans. Ah, I recall hearing about the Puritans, I think. Yeah. But um, So now we have pitchers for the Red Sox. Pitchers? Yep. Yeah. No order. No order at all. Okay. Just pitchers. Luis Tiant. Ah, yeah, very entertaining. Fun to watch. It, great guy. Great stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Still uh, on. Great showman. Oh, yeah. Great competitor. El Tiante. El Tiante. And yeah. a great cigar smoker. Oh, yeah, to this day. Roger Clemens. Yeah. I would guess he had the best pure stuff of any pitcher I've ever seen. When he came up. The young Roger Clemens. Yeah, him but and Tom you know Seaver. What? Even, even when he was old, Clemens still had it. Yeah. Um, Power pitcher. And he, again, I, I met him down at Pawtucket. Nice guy. Mm. Very, very nice guy. But just pure stuff. Oh, boy. Pedro Martinez. Yeah. I think. Put him on the top of the list for me. Best pitcher yeah. I've ever seen. What, not thrower, pitcher. Pitcher, yeah. A guy that knew how to pitch. And he, for 5'9", 160, yeah. boy, the size of the hitters didn't bother him one bit. He went after them and... He had, uh, he was such a great pitcher. He had such command. Yep. He had that splitter. Oh. He knew he was going to throw it. The batter knew he was going to throw it. It didn't matter. They couldn't hit it. They couldn't hit it. Yep. And Pedro admits, too. Yeah. He's, I threw at them. I meant oh, to absolutely. hit them. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. And he wanted them to know it. Yeah. Absolutely. No doubt about it. I'll come headhunting yeah, for you. Dig in. Dig yeah. in on me. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. He was the best. That Friday night in Yankee Stadium, when he went down there with the one hitter and struck out 15 or whatever it was, that was. You know, I was reminded when I was writing this, too, about him. There was a pitcher for the uh, Cleveland Indians early win. Early win, yeah. Oh, sure. miserable old man. Heavy shot. Yep. Big guy, but he could pitch. You didn't, it was an unwritten rule. You didn't bunt on him. He didn't like getting off the mound <laughs> and fielding bunts. Yeah. So you drop a bunt on him, and you're going to get it right between the shoulder blades <laughs> as hard as he can throw it. <laughs> so, one of those unwritten rules, One of those you know? unwritten rules, yeah. Bunch on him and eat the ball. Yeah. Uh, how about, you know, here's a guy we forget totally about. At least I did. Ray Culp. Ray Culp was a yeah. good pitcher. He was he, a very good that's pitcher. That's right. 122 in 101. Uh, 11 years in the big, six years with the Red Sox. Six. Those were his best years. Yeah. 16 and 6, 17 and 8, 17 and 14, 14 and 16, but he had a lower in run average. Yeah. Ray Cope then, was a very solid. Then the arm trouble. Yeah. And then then they were they I were mean, playing the violin, it's all over. Ray Cope was actually like an ideal number two starter. Yes, he was. Right. He really wasn't that Roger Clemens type. That's Pedro right. Martina. No, no, no. He was that. If you had him as you had Ray, if you have Ray Culp as your second starter, you're in very good shape. Tall Cotton. Yeah. Rick Wise. Rick Wise. I don't mention him as a pitcher, but he was a best hitting pitcher. I think he was I good. Was yeah, he could hit. He could hit. I think he did some pinch hitting. Yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah. Came from Cleveland Indians, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure. And I, I thought Wise had come from uh, Cincinnati. The Cardinals. Cardinals? Yeah, I think from the Cardinals. Huh. He and Eckersley were buddies. That. Oh, yeah, Dennis Eckersley. Yeah. Another, yeah. Uh, and you know, Eckersley said that, yeah, he did 
hit two guys on purpose. But the yeah. rest of the time, he said, that was just an accident. Yeah. But he had pinpoint control, not early in his career, though. Right. But boy, could he hum the ball when he came up as a rookie. Yeah. Oh, mercy. Went 20 and 7 that first year here. Yeah. Bob Stanley, Bigfoot. Yeah, Bigfoot Bob Stanley. Another guy we overlook. Yeah. But he had a great career coming Starter, out of Starter, closer for yeah. a while. Is. And Bill Campbell. Yeah. You remember Bill Campbell? I they sure signed do. him as a free agent from Minnesota, 1977. 13 and 9, 2.96 year and run average, 31 saves, and then his arm fell off. Yeah. I was going to I was going to say, you know, you talk again about how the game's changed, right? You got your closer. He was the closer when he had yeah. the saves. 13, 13 and 9. nine. Yeah. <laughs> you stayed in the ball games to await development. 13 and 9 for your closer. John Lester. Yeah, good pitcher. Yeah. Should have kept him. Good pitch. No, nah, he's he's beyond good. He's either very very good or excellent. Yeah. Uh great competitor. Yeah. Um, he's one that got away. He's one that got away. A team, not. That, a team that has wasted so yep. much money. Yep. Yeah, David they Price. They didn't, yeah, they should yeah. have given that money to yeah. Lester. I it mean, that cheaper was, to, yeah. it wouldn't have to give him, yeah. It wouldn't have the problems they got today either. No. Kurt Schilling. Yeah. A Red Sox early on. Yeah. Then he, went off to Baltimore and then ended up. Do you up, think his politics are keeping him out of the Hall exactly of Fame? Right. Yeah, it is. I yeah. do too. Yep. Yeah. I think he'll eventually get in. I think he will, too. Yeah. Common sense is bound But I think his politics are hurting him right now. Billy Mumbuket. Yeah, another good. He had, hey boy, he was uh, Mr. Reliable, you know, yeah. 30, 35 stats every year, and he was a battler. Yeah. And I forgot to look up his stats, but he was very, very solid. Yeah. For seven or eight years with the yeah. Sox. And his rotation made Earl Wilson. Yeah. 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 Earl Wilson was a nice guy. He's another one that would go up to pinch hit because he had home run power. He had pinch hit, I think, multiple pinch hit home runs yeah. off the bench. Yeah, he could hit. He could yeah. hit. And he had a fastball. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Wilson even said uh, that uh, take a taste or two of cocaine before the game. Yeah, I'm not surprised to hear that. Yeah. I was kind of early for that. Yeah, I mean, Wilson right. was early 60s, yeah. right? Yeah, and uh, one thing about him though, he was another one. He was not uh, he was not afraid to push people back off the plate. That's right. Yeah, Ellis Kinder. Ellis Kinder, yeah, a little, yeah. Twelve years with the uh, uh, in the majors, he played with the St. Louis Browns, and the Red Sox had him for eight years. Hundred and two wins, seventy one losses, three point four three earned run average, but he had a twenty three and six in nineteen forty nine. Then a 14 and 12, and an 11 and 2. And then he was the closer afterwards. Had a rubber arm. Mm. Nothing ever happened to his arm. But boy, could Ellis drink. Yeah. Yeah. Ellis, uh, they, they said that he used to come into games. Yeah. They said, yeah. It'd be lucky if Ellis can find the mound. <sighs> Didn't have time to sober up before the game, so he just kept drinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Um, how about Dick Raddatz? Ah, I was waiting for the name. I loved Dick Raddatz when I was a kid. Yep, me too. John L. Sullivan. I can lick any man in the house. That yeah. was the swagger that Raddatz yeah, went out to the come mound in. with. Yeah. Come and on, he, let, let's see what you got, Hitter. He was a closer in the sense that he'd come in in the sixth inning and close yeah. the game. He had four years, and it was the greatest four years I think any yeah. bloody reliever ever had. And in the that this, in the All Star game, like five guys he struck out, one of the five best hitters in baseball in the National League, yeah. he blew them all away. By the way, you know closers now pitch sixty innings, and I, I don't know, you probably don't have his innings, but you know he oh, had they, oh, yeah. over a hundred innings, huge over a hundred yeah. innings, and uh, no reliever pitches a, over a hundred innings. Mickey so. Mantle talked about him one time, and yeah. he said, "I don't think I ever got a hit off him." Yeah. In fact, I guess the stats, and I'm, I folks don't take this one as gospel, but I think he faced Mantle thirty-eight times and struck him out thirty-six times. Is that right? You know. He had a fastball, but it moved. It had all kinds of movement. Poof. 
You just go ahead and hit it with a tennis racket. Yeah. Bruce Hurst. Bruce Hurst, yeah. He's a guy that had good stuff, really good stuff. Yeah. And uh, I don't think he ever got his due. And well, he needed to get. I think he needed to get out of Fenway Park. He left here and succeeded. He went to St. Louis in that huge, the old park, the mm -hmm. big park. Sportsman's Park. Yeah. He had that outfield, Willie McGee and him, yeah. yeah, Vince Vince Coleman, and they just ran everything down. Balls that would be high off the monster or in the net. They would, these guys would, would run him down and catch Those him. Those guys could run too. And all of a sudden he left here and he was a 20 game winner with yep. like a 2.7 ERA. Because yep. those guys ran down all those balls that went off the wall here. Hey, was he Carlton Fisk's brother-in-law? He I, was he had somebody's some kind brother-in-law. He had a connection yeah. somewhere, yeah. But he was a good pitcher. Do you I remember, mean, remember if, Ike DeLock? Yeah. 84 and 75. Um, you know, DeLock, I never had a sore arm. Relieved and started for the Red Sox. And nobody ever said anything about, you know, the guy's effective or anything. He was just there. Yeah. But I always liked him. And Tom Yockey and Gene Yockey. And I'm just wondering, is the hypocrite in charge of the Red Sox going to remove them from the Boston Red Sox Hall of Fame also? He's going to try to. Uh, you know, this they change, is... They're changing the street name, yeah. right? Yeah, but he's in the Red Sox Hall of Fame, him and his wife both. I'm surprised he hasn't tried to get him out of there by now. Yeah, he may. He, he very well may. So, you know, if, but the thing is, you'll never get the name out of the city because it's all over the city. That's right. That's right. A tremendous amount of money. Yeah. That, uh, the Yawkey Foundation, uh, depends on who's telling the story, but they've donated into Boston like $450 million. I believe it. Yeah. And to all, and not just to one or two charities, right. but to all the charities. Uh, Mass General, the whole Yawkey. Children's uh, Hospital. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. all of them. Catholic the, charities, because he was Catholic. Yeah. I mean, a lot of money. Yep. Huge amounts. So, of money. are they going to, are they going to try to get, make Mass General take the guy's name off the off building? Off the building. Maybe they'll try that, huh? When he gave you the money to build it? Yeah. I think the shortest one we have next is the Celtics. Okay, great. Bob Cousy. Yeah. Magician. Magical. He was great. I only saw him when I was young, really young, but I do remember him. I've seen the films. Amazing. Magic. It's just, yeah. just magic. Yeah. Simple. He did stuff you humans can't do. Right. Yeah. Larry Bird. Yeah. I don't think I saw a more intense guy ever play basketball. Yeah, and just a basketball player, yeah. right? Just not a superior athlete who plays basketball no. like LeBron, but a basketball player. Yeah, boy, I'll tell you. you know, uh, and unfortunately, his body broke down on him. Yeah, Tommy and I, my brother and I, Tommy used to work. Uh, he was a CPA in Boston. He used to get some of the uh, one of the Boston banks used to give him Celtics tickets. And um, we went into a couple of games right on the floor, like the third row. Whew. Up close watching Bird under yeah. the boards. Boy, would he pound yeah. in there and get pounded. Yeah. But boy, oh boy. And, and, a, and trash. A world-class world trash talker. <laughs> world-class trash talker. Definitely. John Havlicek. Yeah, Hondo. Hondo. Tiles. Number 17. Tireless. He could run, run and run all and run night. and run. Yeah. yeah. What a great. You know, he could have made it in the NFL as a D back yeah. or a wide receiver. Um, but what a terrific basketball player. Bill Russell. Greatest winner ever. Totally changed the game. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Took on Wilt. Yep. Nobody could stop Wilt. But he could slow him down. He could slow him down. Yeah. Um, Kevin McHale. Yeah, love the guy. Uh, Mr. Low Post Moves. Uh, post them up down he, low and uh, just enjoy it. He just get in there and get yeah, it done. All, elbows yep. going all over the place. Yeah, that was his office. Using in his hip, positioning his body. Yep. Uh, and another guy that in his own quiet way was a real intense basketball player. I used to like him. I used to like watching him. Yeah. Uh, 
Robert Parrish. The chief, yeah. Under the radar. No, fit that team perfectly, though. He did. Because he, he was big, he could run. Run. He could run the floor. And he, he could rebound and he and could he defend. And he didn't need or want the spotlight. Yeah. Yep. He absolutely fit that team. Dave Cowens. Yeah, I love Dave Cowens. Yeah. The ultimate competitor. Yeah. I, that, uh, that is. Imagine the centers coming into Boston and facing the night playing him. Yeah. They have bumps and bruises everywhere. Yeah. That team's an under an under remembered team. It is. Yep. It is. Him and Jojo White, yep. Don Chaney, yep. Paul Silas. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, and Seth Sanders was in was he at, or was it Maxwell? Very, it, it, it was Maxwell. Maxwell, think, yeah. At the begin at the yeah. end. And Maxwell uh, kind of made the transition yep. bird. Yep. Um Tom Heinsohn. Yeah. Way underrated. Oh man. The guy won a championship every year he yeah, played. Every yeah. year he played, hmm. right? He retired early because of his injury problems mm -hmm. at 30. He had bad knees. I believe he only played eight years. Something like that. And he, he, they won a championship every year. He never had a season where he didn't he win the championship. He had a jump shot that was a line drive. Yeah. A walk. And a hook. <laughs> a hook shot. Yeah. Yeah, great hook shot. And I got to tell you something. He'd fake, he'd fake the shot. Yeah. And then watch out. Because he'd drive to the basket, and he didn't care who was in yeah. the way. He was tough, too. Who was he ever? Yeah, he was tough. Bill Sharman. Yeah. Great shooter, great on defense, small and tough as nails. Yeah. Sam Jones. Yeah. Sudden Sam Jones. What a shot. Yeah. Big shots. Yeah. Very, very much underrated player. JoJo White, who recently passed away, was yeah. a great player. Good shooter. Um, again, a self-effacing kind of guy. Yeah, didn't want the spotlight, didn't yeah. need the spotlight. Just a great player. A gentleman. Paul Pierce. Yeah. Never a big Pierce fan. I was early on. Yeah. Um, but great numbers. Yeah. I mean, he had a great career. He's he a did. Hall of Fame caliber player. Then they had the muscle squad. Jim Luskatov. Jungle Jim. Jungle Bob Jim. Bob Branham. Yeah. Clyde Lovellet yeah. and Gene Conley. Yeah. And Red used to love to send two or three of them out there. He actually had three of them on the team at one time. Yeah. It was he a more physical game then. It was a much more physical game Lots then. of fights. Lots of fights. Oh, yeah. the Syracuse Nats, when they came down, they had a guy in Philadelphia, had a guy by the name of Danny Finn. They finally <laughs> banned him. Yeah. It was just nothing but fights every time he played. <laughs> but uh, boy, I'll tell you, Red loved to put Lusky in yeah, there. Yeah, you needed that in the 60s, in the 60s in the NBA. You you needed an yeah, enforcer. Yeah, Brandon, Brandon or was, two. Brandon was Luska tough before Luska tough. Yeah, tough. tough you needed. Dude. You really needed two enforcers in those days in case the first one got thrown out in the first <laughs> half. You needed one for the second. And half. And they were using Clyde Lavella as an enforcer. Yeah, yes, and he they had were. been a basketball player earlier in his career. Uh, then you get Frank Ramsey, probably my all-time favorite Celtic. Yeah. Just did everything for yeah, you. Yeah, he was good. Another real basketball player. Yep. It's a great sixth man. And you know, he used to play forward at 6'3". Mm. Cliff Hagen. Well, he came with Ramsey uh, when they drafted him from Kentucky. But he was a trade chip. Yeah. And he went out to St. Louis. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, Cedric Maxwell, clutch player, nice. way yep. underrated, and funny, funny commentator. Good guy, yeah, I like yeah. him. I like Max. Satch Sanders, yeah, great, great rebounder, player. great player, great defender. And I saved a couple of the best for last. Bill Walton, yeah, wasn't here long, but he Part was fun. Of the single greatest Celtics team, I think. Well, yeah. not by numbers, but by watching them. Yeah. Oh, could they play basketball? Eighty-six, yeah, they were entertaining as hell. Walton would run the floor. Yeah. Oh. And he hadn't been able to stay healthy the nope. three or four years before he got nope. here. Nope, he had that one year. And the Celtics managed him well. Right? Yeah. He, he got a lot of off nights. Yep. And he stayed healthy. Don Nelson. Yeah, then push shot. Yep. Just a good player, contributor, smart. He was the kind of guy that he'd never lose a game for right. you. Made yeah. the right play. All, yeah, you're right. He made the right play. And then finally. Red Auerbach. The architect of it all. 
uh, you know, reading some of the stuff that he used to say and yeah, uh, yeah, he was a, a great guy in terms of being an interesting story. Yeah, you know, oh, he he at was the time when the league was holding on by a shoestring. Yeah. They didn't know if they would still be solvent in a month. He didn't know if they'd be able to play, pay, yeah. actually pay the players. Walter Brown, right? It was out in front of the place with a hat collected right. money. But I went back. Uh, you're right. I think that he is one of the real architects of the NBA as we know yeah. it today. Uh, without him, it may be a totally different story. Yeah. Uh, but what a genius. <laughs> How the hell did he get Larry Bird? Yeah, that was smoke and mirrors. That was a great move, yeah. He was willing to wait a year. He was willing to, yeah. the way the draft rights worked. Yep. Larry had transferred college, so he had to wait a yep. year. Uh, and the three guys from Kentucky... Yeah, uh, Ramsey, Hagen, and Sharopoulos. Now, Sharopoulos was just a bit player, but Hagen was an important trade chip mm -hmm. uh, because they got that pick, the St. Louis pick, and of course that brought Russell. Right. Um, the rest is history. The rest is history. Um, well, we got through two teams. Yeah, we did. We got the Bruins. Okay. And we got the Pats. Another time, I guess. Another time. Okay. I think we're going to have to do it. I don't think we can squeeze it in the no, half a minute we I, have left. Right. But um, I spent some time uh, going over some of the early uh, Pats rosters, and she has this bunch of guys I forgot. I bet. Uh, but uh, and the Bruins, I had fun with the Bruins because— uh, Jimmy Colclaw in there? Yeah. Jim Coca. <laughs> and you know, one of my favorites is in here is Andy Katzenmoyer. Yeah, Andy Katzenmoyer. Boy, did he, was he, he came out of Ohio State. He did. And, well, uh, and he had injuries, cut his. Yeah, uh, and, it didn't and work out. It didn't, and, and he was a the, great college player. Oh, and he, the a half a season where he played yeah. for the Pats. Boy, oh boy. and Sideline to sideline, as yeah, they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but I think, it, was it concussions? I forget. Uh, I, I thought it was a leg injury. All I know is his game was speed. I know he it was his run decision. Like a gazelle. It was his decision to retire. Yeah, but he had but, size and oh, man. weight, and he, he could hit. He, but so it was he his was speed. He was so enchilada. Fast when he was at Ohio State. Yeah. Well, all right then. Uh, a dandy show. Yep. And we'll do the second half of it. Probably. Okay. Not next week. Next week, I think we're going to be tied up with the uh, Super Bowl. Yes, indeed. After that. Do some scouting. So, friends, hope you enjoyed our little chatting. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. And go Pats. Go Pats. Go Pats. So, there. There we go.